Hello everyone and welcome to Boundless Dentistry. In this video, we'll talk about coronectomy, which is which is an alternative procedure as compared to traditionally how we treat third molars which are impacted by doing complete extraction. So in this video, we'll talk about everything that is related to coronectomy. So let's get started. Now, normally when third molars are impacted, it can be vertically impacted, horizontally impacted. So there are different types of impactions of third molar. So when normally third molar is impacted, it can be either upper or lower. The most common approach to extract them is by doing surgical extraction where you expose the overlying mucosa and then you extract the tooth out. But in some cases, there is some complication associated with extracting these third molars because the third molar is very closely associated with inferior alveolar nerve. As you can also see in this diagrammatic picture, this is the inferior alveolar canal and in this canal is the inferior alveolar nerve which is supplying sensory nerve supply to all of your mandibular teeth along with the associated soft tissue. So this nerve is very important keeping its sensory functions in mind. So when we extracting the third molars, we have to make sure that this roots of the third molar are not closed or superimposed on this inferior alveolar nerve. So in some cases, especially in vertical impaction, the roots of the third molar, mandibular third molar, are very close or almost superimposed on this inferior alveolar nerve. So there is a risk associated when we'll extract this tooth and it can damage the inferior alveolar nerve, thereby risking its important function. So an alternative um, procedure as opposed to complete removal by extraction is known as coronectomy. Now, coronectomy is also called as intentional partial undentectomy. In this case, what, what do we actually do? Basically, we remove the crown of the tooth only, thereby leaving the roots as it is because it's close to the nerve. So we do not touch the roots. However, we just remove the crown of the tooth. Now, this helps us avoiding damage to the inferior alveolar nerve because this nerve is very important as it's supplying sensory supply to the teeth, lips and chin. However, how do we evaluate the relationship of these root to the inferior alveolar nerve? we go for CBCT because CBCT tells us how closely these roots are associated with the inferior alveolar nerve. Now, and in this diagrammatic picture, you can appreciate that this is a second molar and this is a third molar which is impacted and somewhere nearby is the inferior alveolar nerve. So, how do we treat such patients? Basically, we remove the crown of the tooth only, thereby leaving the roots as it is. And this helps us saving the inferior alveolar nerve. You can compare the before picture and the after picture. Only the crown is removed and the roots are as it is. So this is the basic concept which involves coronectomy, removal of the crown only without the removal of the root. So this is the basic concept which you should keep in mind. Now there are certain indication and contraindication before we actually perform coronectomy on patients Firstly, let's talk about indication. As you can see in this clinical picture, you can appreciate that there is this third molar which is vertically impacted. Also, we have inflamed operculum as well, which is called as pericoronitis. And you can also appreciate that these roots are very close to the inferior alveolar nerve, thereby increasing the chances of damage to these nerves. So, what are the indications? Firstly, when the roots are very closely associated with inferior alveolar nerve, and there are certain features which tell us how closely the nerve is associated with the roots of the third molar. Now, there are chances of risk to the damage to the nerve. Now, firstly, when the proximity of these roots are very close to the nerve, so this is one indication that while extracting in no normal extraction, this can damage the nerve. Other than that, sometimes when the root is closely associated with the nerve, along this pathway where the roots are present the nerve starts to the canal starts to narrow down so this gives us an idea that the nerve is actually very close to the roots and it can be damaged and lastly the lamina dura which surrounds the roots of the tooth they also there is interruption in there so when there is interruption this tells us that yes the roots are very close to the nerve and there are chances of damage so these are the indications which we should keep in mind that gives us an idea that normal extraction can damage the nerve thereby coronectin is an alternative procedure where we can save the nerve. 
Now, talking about contraindication, there are many contraindications where we do not perform coronectomy and we have to go for traditional surgical extraction. As you can see in this um, OPG, a section of OPG, you can appreciate that this is the third molar which is present over here and it's horizontally impacted. So, in horizontally impacted cases, there is a risk that the nerve can be damaged because as we are trying to extract this tooth, so the roots are present close. So, while retrieving the roots, the nerve can be damaged. Other than that, patients who are medically compromised, they should not go for coronectomy because there is increased chances of infection. In some patients where third molars are impacted and there is associated periapical root infection, so in the, those cases, we should not perform coronectomy because if we leave the roots right here, it can lead to further infections. Now, in patients who have active periodontal diseases, and in those cases, the teeth are mobile. So in, those, in that patient, we should not perform coronectomy because the root will remain mobile in, in the socket. So we should go for complete extraction now. In non-vital lower third molars, which you can say that the pulp has undergone necrosis. So in those patients, we should not perform coronectomy. We should always go for complete extraction. Other than that, there are certain angulations of impaction of third molar, which contraindicates performance of coronectomy. This includes distal angular crown being positioned in a distal angular away from the second molar. Horizontal impaction, as you can see in this um, OPG, as I have talked before, there is while we are sectioning the crown, we are trying to take out this crown, there is increased chances of nerve damage. Other than that, when we are trying to perform coronectomy and we feel that the root is now mobile, so in that cases, we have to go for removal of the root as well. And lastly, in cases where there is cyst or tumor present around the tooth, most commonly dentigerous cyst or dontogenic cyst, and tumor most commonly that we encounter is ameloblastoma. So in that cases, if we suspect these conditions, pathologies associated with the tooth, we should never go for coronectomy and we should always perform complete extraction. So these are the contraindications which you should always keep in mind because coronectomy is an alternative procedure. It's not the preferred procedure. It's used in those cases where we have idle conditions and we can easily remove the crown. In most of the cases, almost always we should go for complete extraction of the third molar. Now, talking about how do we actually perform coronectomy, the technique used to perform coronectomy, most commonly coronectomy is used in vertical impacted third molar where there are higher chances of involvement of the nerve. Firstly, we go for gingival incision. Then the crown is transected 3 to 4 mm amelodental junction at 45 degree. As you can see that the burr is placed at a 45 degree angle just below 3 to 5 mm of amelodental junction. Why do we do that? So that when we are using a burr at this angle, as you can see, that a lingual nerve is present on the lingual aspect of third molar. So we're trying to save the lingual nerve, thereby having an angle of the burr at 45 degrees. So we are saving the lingual nerve, which is a very important nerve to save now. Pulp is not touched. Pulp is left untreated as it is. We do not do anything to the pulp. Now, the root is reduced further 3 to 4 mm below the crest of alveolar ridge. You can see that this is the crest of alveolar ridge over here and we reduced it 3 to 4 mm below. That is important because we will suture it up and that helps to perform the procedure safely. Now there are some times when root reduction is not possible because the lingual nerve is very closely associated with the tooth. So in that cases we do not perform root reduction and we leave it as it is because we do not want to damage the lingual nerve. After we have performed and extracted this crown of the tooth, then we irrigate the socket thoroughly so that there is no debris or any kind of pathological tissue present over it because that will interrupt the healing of the socket. So after irrigation, then we cover the flap with the mucosal flap and then we use, uh, use um, suture to close it up. So this is the technique that you should know about coronectomy, which is very important to know. Now. Although this procedure is safe to perform, but it is associated with certain post-operative complications. Firstly, it can lead to pain, which is quite normal as it is associated with almost all dental procedures. So patient will experience some pain. Other than that, swelling can also be associated as patient will experience some swelling because of incisions and placement of sutures. Other than that, sometimes 
bruising and bleeding into socket can also take place because of the incision and a surgical approach towards the procedure. Now, at times, limited mouth opening can also be present because as the patient has opened their mouth throughout the procedure, so that can fatigue the muscles of mastication, so that can also lead to Christmas. And lastly, sometimes post-operative infection can also take place. So these are the post-operative complications that you should keep in mind so that you can treat the patient accordingly. Now, lastly, talking about what are the pros and cons of performing coronectomy as compared to the traditional complete extraction of third molar. Firstly, the most important pro of coronectomy is that it decreases the chances to the nerve damage as compared to surgical removal of third molar. Now, however, incidence of dry socket as compared to the traditional approach and coronectomy is same. So, there is a difference in incidence of dry socket. Now, at times, there are chances of migration of root when coronectomy is performed because as the root is left so root tries to migrate in an occlusal direction so when that happens a second procedure is performed and since the root is now away from the nerve so the root can now be easily retrieved thereby saving the nerve now the root may move away from the nerve which is why a second procedure is mandated to remove the root and lastly the conical shaped root have greater chances of coronectomy failure. So these are the pros and cons of coronectomy that you should keep in mind which helps us actually decide whether we should go for coronectomy or we should go for traditional a complete extraction of mandibular third molar. So in this video we talked about coronectomy which is an important alternative to traditional surgical extraction of mandibular third molar. We talked about everything that is related to coronectomy, starting off from its basic introduction, then we talking about the important concepts associated with coronectomy, then we talked about indications, contraindications, the techniques used, sometimes the post-operative complications occur that we also talked about. And then lastly, we talked about the pros and cons that are associated with coronectomy. So I hope this video was useful for you. And if you like this video, please like, share, subscribe, and press the bell icon. Thank you for watching this video. See you next time.